Okay, in the last video, we delineated a watershed area um, with multiple tools within the Saga Terrain Analysis um, Toolbox. Um, and essentially we're doing this to determine Q values of a stream at our bridge here. Um, but this is only part of the regional regression equation. We also need to calculate stream length and elevation points um, within our stream. And so this video will cover essentially how to do that in QGIS. So the first thing we need to do is draw in our stream. And the first thing we're going to do is turn back on our DEM um, and then potentially we can use the channels as reference but I'd rather just follow the, the DEM here. So we want to create a new layer, new shapefile layer, and this is going to be, we'll just call this channel. And we want it to be line. And one thing to always watch out for when you're creating a new shapefile or saving a shapefile is this little line right here. And you always want to set it. Um, here we're using um, Oklahoma State Plain North feet um, projection. Um, but you always want to make sure you keep the same projection for all of your stuff so you know it's correct units. Okay. Hit OK. And so now we just have this new shape file, and but there's nothing in it. Um, real quick, I'm just going to change change it to uh, let's see here, just the dash blue line, so we know this is our channel, and it shows up a little bit better. And basically, what I'm going to do is just trace the channel, and you can see it coming here. And for the regional regression equation, you want to basically use the longest channel within your watershed. So you can see how it branches off here, and we're just going to stick with this main channel all the way through. And for the most part, I like to just use the DEM. You can see it pretty well, kind of where the, the creek channel is. So we have our channel shape file, but we need to start editing it. So you come up here. Um, again to this toggle editing the little pencil you hit it assuming you've already clicked on the file you want and now it popped you can see how these popped up and so we want to add a line feature click that then it just gives gives us this little target um, and we'll just start in here and you just start clicking okay and you can get as precise as you want here. Um, you want to, for the most part, keep it within the center line of the channel because once you get your elevations, if you're just slightly off and out here, it can be a lot higher than it should be. I'm going to just quickly do this um, just for example. Okay. Um, so don't do this at the same resolution I am. Um, but you can get the idea real easy. Okay. So you can see that obviously a lot of these creeks have quite a few bends in them. Um, and it, it takes, you know, a fair amount of time to really get a full handle on on getting these in okay so um, again you want to be a lot more zoomed in than what I'm doing um, but this is just for reference okay and then you can see how the creek channel is fading quite a bit within our DEM um, as the 
definition of the channel is a lot less. Um, and you can see here it's almost faded. And one good thing to do at this point is to click out of the DEM and actually just go to the satellite and really determine whether this is truly a channel anymore or is it just a drainage. And so you can see kind of we're basically at the end right here. So let's just end it and we'll right click and this box should pop up. We can just hit OK and you can see our channel now. We want to go back to toggle editing and that way we can save our feature. Okay. So now within this watershed we have our channel feature. So the two parameters that we need for the regional regression equation from our channel are the elevations at 10% and 85% of the channel length as well as the distance between the 10% and 85% locations. So the first thing we're going to do is just figure out what the total length of the channel is. Um, and this is similar to how we calculated the watershed area. We want to right click our channel geometry, open the attribute table, and go to the field calculator. And here we want length in feet. Um, again, it's a decimal number. One thing I forgot to mention in the last video about the watershed is the reason we have to do this in feet first is because the geometry layers only calculate within the units of your coordinate system. And so that's feet, which is fine. Um, but for the regional regression equation, it likes things in miles or square miles for the area. Um, so that's why we need to convert it. So first we're going to do it in feet. Um, so here, similar to before, um, we're going to come down and actually use length. Um, again, not the dollar sign, we're just going to use the regular length. And then come back up to the dollar sign geometry. Close the brackets. We'll hit OK. So here's the total channel length in feet. And then now we want to convert that to miles. So go back to the field calculator. Um, we have a length miles category or column. And again, we want the field value of length. And now we want to divide that by 5280, um, the number of feet in a mile. And we can hit OK. And so now we have the length in miles. Okay. And we'll toggle the editing to save that. So we'll just remember this number for now, um, but that'll give us the information we need to calculate the values in a minute. So now we actually need to create and figure out where the 10% and the 85% values are. And there's kind of a neat way to do that. Um, if we come to our processing toolbox and type in points along a line. And this is actually a GDAL um, tool, and it's under the Vector Geo Processing. So double click that. So we want an input layer of our channel. Um, and we can either do this one at a time, or I actually prefer to do it run as a batch process, because we need the 10% and the 85% um, markers. So if we run as a batch process down here, Essentially, we can run both of these at the same time. Um, the downside is that it puts it into two separate files, um, but that's okay for now. So I want to hit the plus button so we have two, two lines here. So the input layer, we'll select from open layers, and this is just going to be our channel. We'll select that for both. And again, this is different from the channels um, that we created for... Um, the watershed. Okay, so this is distance from line start represented as fraction of line length. So the first one we want 10% and the next one we want 85. So this goes from 0 to 1. Um, 
Okay, and then here points along lines. This basically is just asking for the file um, we want to save it to. So let's go just to the desktop here, and again we'll just save it as a shape file, and we'll call this the 10%. Um, that's okay. We don't want to autofill. And then again shape file, and this will be. 85%. Okay. So now we can run this. Okay. All right. And I actually forgot to add these to the drawing, so let's just do that real quick. Okay. So now we have two little shape files that are each just one point a piece. We have our 10% the point location and these are right on the line so that's what the tool did is points along the line so it restricts it to within the line geometry and then here we have the 85 percent okay so now we need to calculate the elevation um, at these points so you can either do it one at a time uh, or merge these two together and um, and then that way we have one file that's what I like to do just so it's a little bit clearer um, so let's see I right, merge and I want to merge vector layers so you can either do this with Saga or um, with just the basic QGIS tools which is what I'll use so I've got my 10% 85% um, I'm going to make sure and set this destination CRS um, to our Oklahoma State plane and then save the file here. It's just, we'll just call it channel point. Okay. All right. So it showed up as merged here. I'm going to remove these two just to avoid any confusion. Um, so again, now you see um, these two points. So one thing I like to do, um, just so I know exactly what they are, um, oops, is to essentially label them. Um, you can see they're coming from a certain layer, um, and that generally makes things easier. But I like to toggle the editing and... We'll select this one. You see it shows up. That's our 85%. So I'm just going to call that 85 and down here call it 10. And then that way we know exactly which one's which. Okay. So what we want is the elevation of each of these two points um, based on our DEM. So We want to use, go back to our processing toolbox and we want to add raster values to points. So here it's a Saga tool and it's kind of between vectors and rasters. So we want to add raster values to points. So we'll double click that. Essentially what that's going to do is going to say at that exact point, what is the raster value? And so our points file is going to be our merged. Um, and we want to use the original DEM, not necessarily the field, um, just to make sure it's the actual um, point value. Okay. And we want to use, here we have a small enough, or, or not too small of a um, pixel value that we want to use nearest neighbor interpolation so that's just the exact value of that exact point some of these other ones will kind of take the mean of the closest pixel but here we have two meter raster so we want the exact location okay and so we'll save this to a file um, and we'll call it channel points elevation so again we're kind of creating a few extra files which we can clean up later um, 
but that's all right. Okay, we'll run that. Okay, there we go. So now here it pops up as results, and that's one thing you have to watch in QGIS. It, it gives kind of a temporary name um, to some of these, but you can just hold the cursor on it for a second and see the actual file path. Um, or if you want the actual file, you can just remove this and, and bring in the actual file, which this is just a different name. But so let's open the attribute table and we can look. And now you can see we have the elevation values um, that we need. So the 10% and the 85%. So that essentially gives us all the information at least we need from QGIS to determine our rule regression equations. Um, so we have the 85% and the 10% elevations and we have the total length of the channel but again we can divide that out um, and figure out the length between these two points fairly easily and then we have the area of the watershed and so the length and the elevations will give us a slope we have the area um, all we need is basically the precipitation for this specific area and then that will complete all of our um, necessary parameters to calculate the flow rates using the USGS regional regression equation. So that's it for this video. Thanks.